Hello, and welcome to another video tutorial from Oklahoma City University's Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit a video in D2L's media library. I'm going to demonstrate how you can optimize the video for streaming. I'm going to show you how you can add a table of contents with chapter bookmarks, to, which allow a student to jump to different parts of the video. I'm going to show you how you can add closed captions and a transcript. Then I'm going to show you how you can edit the video and cut out portions that you don't want. First, in your web browser, navigate to ocuonline.okcu.edu and log in using your Oklahoma City University credentials. These are the same username and password that you use to check your university email. Navigate to your course that you would like to place the video in. Once in your course, in the course nav bar across the top, click on OCU Resources and then click Media Library. I'm going to show you two different videos and let me just grab one here. So let me do, um, let me see if this one will work. I'm going to click the ellipsis on that video and then click Edit. You'll notice that there is a blue Optimize for Streaming button across the top. D2L no longer transcodes or converts MP3 and MP4 files since browsers can play those formats. So if you have uploaded a video that is an older MP3 or an MP4 file that is especially on the larger size and you would like to optimize it for streaming to condense the file size and make it more accessible to your students, Click the blue Optimize for Streaming button. It's going to process the file and compress it and optimize it for streaming within the D2L system. Once it's done, it'll load back up into the media library. So I'm just going to navigate to another video and show you how you can add the table of contents, closed captions, and edit a video. So let's click on this video right here, click the horizontal button, ellipsis there, and click on edit. Notice in this video, I have a table of contents tab and a closed captions tab. I can come in here and add chapter bookmarks and allow my students to jump forward to different parts of the video. So notice underneath the video, there is a timeline. If I click play, the timeline progress bar is blue and will indicate where the video is currently at in the timeline. Let's say I want to create a chapter bookmark right there at the 10 second mark. Wherever my timeline is, is where the chapter bookmark is going to be placed. Come over here in the chapter title field and just give it a title and then click the add new chapter button. Notice it has placed a chapter bookmark at the 10 second mark. You can repeat this process to add additional bookmarks throughout the rest of your video. If you make mistakes, place the blue progress bar where you would like the chapter bookmark to show and then click this set time to seek position. Wherever your blue progress seek bar is, the time will change to that time. Next, you can add closed captions and a transcript to your video by clicking on the closed captions tab. Click on auto generate. And then click auto generate again. This is going to generate captions and a transcript for your video. Once the video is finished processing, it'll load back into the media library. So I'm just simply going to navigate to another video and show you how you can make edits. I'm going to go back to my sample video here and click on the horizontal ellipsis tool. Click edit one more time. 
And I'm going to come down here and back in my timeline, you're going to notice that there is a seek icon with an arrow, a mark icon with a line, and a cut icon with a pair of scissors. I'm going to use the seek icon to seek and place my video where I would like to make my edit. Let's say I had made a mistake in my three second mark. I want to click the mark icon and then click on my three second. And let's see here. I know that my mistake is not that long. So I just want to put it right there, but I need to zoom in and continue to make edits here. How, how can I fix that? So if I click on my timeline and then I drag down like this, it'll zoom and I can see more precise edits. If I need to bring my mark back in, I can do it that way. Again, you click the bottom of the timeline. Notice my cursor has changed to a hand. Click, it closes the hand like a closed fist, and I can drag to zoom in and out of my timeline. The longer your video, the more you can zoom in. So let's say I wanna cut this section out. Now I'm gonna come over and click on the cut icon. When I move my mouse back over the timeline, you'll notice it highlights different sections. It highlighted this long black section. If I come back over here to the blue section, it highlights the blue section. But I don't want to cut those. I want to cut this section right here. Make sure to click within the appropriate section you would like to cut using this icon. Once I click it, it's going to change red the red portions are going to be removed. Let's say I wanna come over here and I'm going to create another, I'm changing it to my seek icon and I'm gonna make another edit right here. I wanna click mark, place a mark there, and I'm gonna place another mark there. Click the cut icon again and select that section that I have just marked out and remember it turns red. Once I'm finished editing my video, I can come up here and click the blue finish button and it'll process all my edits. Click finish one more time. And Media Library is gonna process my edits to the video. This may take a few, a few moments depending on the length of your video. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning.